Sanofi, a global and diversified healthcare leader, has just released results for the full year 2016. Olivier Brandicourt, welcome. Hello. You are the CEO of Sanofi. What are the highlights of these Q4 2016 and full year results? Well, I have to say I'm pleased with the results of the fourth quarter. All our five global business units of our streamlined organization delivered growth. Sales grew about 3.4% to 8.9 billion euros, which no longer included any contribution from our former animal house business. I'm particularly impressed by the performance of Sanofi Genzyme, which reported another quarter of double-digit sales growth. Also important was a return to growth of our consumer healthcare business, driven by strong sales in Europe. On the bottom line, fourth quarter business EPS declined by 1.5% to 1.25 euros due to unfavorable tax rate comparison to last year. We believe that the 3.7% increase in our business operating income is a good indicator for the improved operational performance in the quarter, which we achieved despite the significant investments we made in our business. Full year 2016 sales increased about 1.2% and reached almost 34 billion euros, excluding the former animal health business. Growth was driven by our specialty care and vaccine businesses. Sanofi Pasteur sales were up 8.8% to 4.6 billion euros and benefited from the strong performance of our Axim family of pediatrics combination products which grew nearly 40% to 700 million euros and a new record year for our flu vaccine franchise. So overall, our financial performance in 16 was stronger than we had initially expected. Business EPS were up 4.1% to 568 euros consistent with our raised guidance. After a challenging year for the diabetes franchise, can you comment on performance in Q4? Worldwide sales of diabetes grew by 1.9% in the quarter and reached 2 billion in sales. So we are encouraged by the strong performance of Tugio, which posted sequential growth of 39% over the previous quarter and continues to capture share in key markets, both in Europe and in Japan. An important addition to the diabetes franchise is Soliqua, our new fixed ratio combination of Lantus and the GLP-1 lixicinatide in a single once daily injection. We launched Soliqua in the US last month and we are now preparing the rollout in Europe following the uh, EU approval in January. As anticipated, the performance of our global diabetes franchise remains impacted by the competitive environment in the U.S. As a result, full year 2016 sales of diabetes declined by close to 2%, which is in line with our previously issued multi-year guidance for the global franchise. Your atopic dermatitis therapy, Dupixent, is expected to have FDA approval in Q1. What other interesting assets do you have in the pipeline? Well, we are excited about the potential of Dupixent, our breakthrough innovation for the treatment of moderate to severe atopic dermatitis, for which we are anticipating a regulatory decision on March 29. In addition to Dupixent's potential as a life-changing therapy for patients with atopic dermatitis, we are developing Dupilumab in multiple other inflammatory diseases, such as asthma, and nasal polyposis. The ongoing phase three study in adult asthma is due this year, and we expect to file before year end. We also initiated phase three studies in nasal polyposis, and we plan to start a comprehensive life cycle management program for pediatric AD, atopic dermatitis patients, this year. Separately, we advance five new molecular entities into registrational studies in 2016, including sotaglifosine in diabetes and isatuximab in oncology. So with sotaglifosine, our SGLT1 and 2 inhibitor, we explore the potential benefits of its dual inhibition mechanism of action and how the product profile 
is differentiated from currently marketed products in the class. We started phase three studies in monotherapy and also in combination with metformin in the fourth quarter. Isatuximab, our anti-CD38 antibody in oncology, targets a unique epitope, and we believe this differentiation may have advantages over the marketed antibody. In the fourth quarter, we initiated a phase three program in the multiple myeloma indication where anti-CD38 mechanism is rapidly becoming a standard of care. What are your plans for returning capital to shareholders? As you know, we have clearly defined priorities for capital allocation. The overall objective is to create significant long-term shareholder value. Today's proposal of a dividend of 296 euro per share for 2016 marks the 23rd year of a dividend increase. The continued commitment to a progressively growing dividend remains a core element of our capital allocation strategy. We also ramped up our share buyback activity in 2016, particularly during the last quarter, in anticipation of the closing of the asset swap with Boehringer Hingelheim. And as a reminder, the 3.5 billion euro program announced last October includes a portion of the net proceeds from the asset swap to offset dilution. While we expect to complete this program before year end, we do not preclude the possibility of additional share repurchases once we have reached the 3.5 billion euro figure. And lastly, what is your outlook for 2017? In terms of outlook for 2017, we expect our business EPS to be stable to minus 3% at constant exchange rates. And this guidance is consistent with our previously announced expectation of no meaningful growth over the period of 16 and 17 and comes despite the challenging environment in which we operate. In fact, the high end of our 2017 guidance would exceed our initial expectation, which was part of our 2020 strategic roadmap. And in addition to the performance outlook for 2017 at constant exchange rates, we anticipate a positive currency tailwind of about 3 to 4% based on December 2016 average exchange rates. Olivier Brandicourt, CEO of Sanofi, thank you very much. Thank you.